there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron and this is the final conclusion video of the Hazegui F14A Tomcat. Um, now as you can see it's all nicely built up now, it is quite a delicate model so I'm trying to be careful with it, um, but hopefully I'll just try and get this over, you know, it's looking really nice and weathered, nicely like a um, Tomcat, okay, on a nice kind of tour of duty or something like that, really nicely weathered up. Now, uh, I just want to go through um, kind of like the whole build process and let you know what problems you're going to get with this kit, okay, and there's a few aftermarket parts on this kit um, as well so we can talk through them but best way I like to go through this is get the instructions out and we can have a talk about how it all went together. Now the first up was the cockpit area. Um, now I didn't build the cockpit although it does look like it will go together quite nicely but I put in some Aries um, resin cockpit. Now the Aries resin cockpit looks absolutely beautiful I mean the detail in there is um, you know second to none you just can't beat it it will look amazing with all that de detail and it does however it does not fit in any way shape or form it is a bit of a nightmare um, you're gonna be sanding test fit sand test fit sand test fit hack and saw and chop um, and it will take you quite some time and you will have to actually hack and chop at the actual uh, stirring plastic of the model as well to get it to fit so although it's a big you know nice thumbs up for detail um, it is an absolute nightmare on fit so just remember that if you want to build this kit and you want to jazz it up with some extras it's going to be a nightmare with the um, resin cockpit. Uh, moving along I also did the um, resin wheel wells as well again same thing nightmare to fit and everything um, but again they look absolutely second to none outstanding that was the front one um, moving along um, air intakes now the air intakes on the kit they did fit um, quite nicely but I can imagine that if you um, didn't take your time with dry fitting making sure it fitted and just testing it I can imagine it being a bit of a fit issue right but I took my time dry fitted made sure it all went together you know and then glued it nice and neatly and I had no problems with it okay but I'm just warning you that you will if you don't take your time with that area um, and just move along the instructions right we've got also the um, rear wheel wells as well now they were the same as the front nightmare to fit but when you do actually get them in there I almost made a mistake um, and the mistake is that uh, once you've got the resin in there and you think right I've got it all to fit and it takes you ages to kind of get it to fit um, you glue the fuselage section together you come along to go and um, put your wings on and try and close it and what you find is that you should have hacked away at the resin wheel well um, a bit more to be able to have the wings in the closed position now luckily for me on this kit um, the wings are meant to be in the open position and be stay and stay in the open position so it wasn't a problem for me but if you guys want to do this and you want to have your wings closed just remember that if you have that resin um, wheel well in there just remember to dry fit and make sure that your wings can also go on and close with the resin wheel, well, wheel wells in there so that was just a note um, if you want your wheel uh, wings in the closed position um, the exhausts um, now what you get with the kit were okay but I went off and got the resin exhaust as well no problems with them they look damn nice um, definitely well, well recommended and worth it um, and they also fit which was a nice bonus uh, now just moving along and having a look through the rest of the instructions ah, now installing the nose section now um, this is also a bit of a fit issue on the kit I wouldn't say it's a big issue it's just um, if you take your time again dry fit dry fit dry fit you can get it to be quite nice and then you just need to do a bit of filling and sanding and it's just in this area here maybe I could bring you in 
it's just this area here where it just joins I mean if you kind of come along and just um, dry fit it and then a little bit of filling and sanding in this area um, and it, 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 it will be no problem uh, it's just a bit of an awkward bit of a sanding position because of the way it kind of grooves and curves a bit so um, you know little thing just to kind of note there as well in the build that wasn't such a big deal uh, so I'm just moving along the rest of instructions um, now if I'm not saying anything that's because there's no real problem um, so that's a good thing yeah yeah that was it really um, as I say um, the main problems with this kit was actually the aftermarket parts to be totally honest um, it was the whole kind of resin cockpit and resin wheel wells that the problem the only real problem with this kit was putting this the whole no section fuselage onto the fuselage um, which wasn't too much of a bad problem and the air intakes which um, wasn't also a problem either it's all a case of nice dry fitting and it will get there nicely but if you rush those two areas will be a problem um, so the build stage went really nice the level of detail on the kit is actually you know typical nice hazagoe recessed panel lines recessed rivets nice crisp and does the job really nicely um, so that's the build stage now moving along to like the whole paint stage now with this particular build i did want to go to town and show like a nice kind of aircraft carrier on tour kind of aircraft that's been really kind of you know it's seen you know all that sea salt and whatnot and it's had a bit of kind of spray maintenance going on um, and it's really kind of had a nice bit of uh, weathering going on now how i achieved this was like four stages of uh, bleaching um, I did the pre-shade in the main coat and then four stages of bleaching as I say which was um, two stages of uh, different lighter original colors and then two stages of um, darker um, original um, colors what I mean by this is you take the original color on top um, which actually I'll just get out the paints that I used where are they uh, they're just here. I'll use the Aquarius Hobby Colour H307 and H308. Um, and what I used on top, I used the H307. And plain and simply, you add a couple of drops of white and you make this colour a little bit lighter. And then you do a nice motley bleached effect. Add some more white and then go and do a bit more of a, 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 a motley bleached effect again. So you've got like two different colours going on down there and then you kind of go the other way and then add you know some black do a bit of a motley kind of bleach thing going on then add some more black and then kind of do that mottling thing so the whole surface has got this light really kind of mottled bleached effect all over which really does kind of set it off so maybe we could get you in a little bit close on our spray work okay I uh, don't know how well it's going to pick up on camera um, but what we also did is go I went off and did a uh, free stage post shading as well where we took the original color a couple of drops of black made it darker and we followed all our panel lines to give our panel lines a bit of oomph a bit of kind of dirt and grime and just bring them out a bit um, and then what I also did was add even more black to make it really kind of like a dark version of our H307 um, and I did like this whole kind of like maintenance spray work going on um, here and this area was really really dark and looked really kind of maybe a bit too over the top um, but what I did after was come in with a third stage which was just pure H307 went over the dark areas to give us this kind of really cool um, sort of look of maintenance people coming round with a aerosol can or whatever and spraying out all the kind of scratches and weathering and stuff to stop you know all that salt air from digging away um, eating away at the actual uh, metal of the aircraft and kind of eroding it right so um, nice bit of erosion control spray work going on there which i really did like i mean it took me hours to do 
all over um, and it's no easy task but um, when you kind of look close at the actual paintwork it really does set it off the weathering side of things I came along and used um, stuff like your MIG production oils um, and basically I, I did a pin wash now this technique is quite um, so say it's a bit time consuming but it really gives you some nice results now I'm probably going to show I will show that in um, a step-by-step -step video build in the future um, but I really like how the technique comes along where you put your pin wash into all our recessed panel lines to get all our recessed panel lines all nice dirty and grimy um, but you do this um, it's kind of like a nice kind of um, brush across with um, cotton uh, cotton bud sticks uh, cotton wool um, sticks and what you do is you kind of like make all this general streaking dirty grime go all across the aircraft um, and hopefully I can bring you in again and hopefully you can kind of see I don't know how well you're gonna see it on camera because it is a nice light bit of um, streaking that goes all the way along. I'm trying to play cameraman here, so bear with me. Yeah, but hopefully you can see that. Um, and also come along with the oils along here to do a kind of like dirty kind of thing going on where the wings close. Um, and I had to mask that up and get that all nice and right, so um, that looks all nice and dirty and realistic there. Um, so hopefully, as you can see, there was a lot of work going on with spray work and weathering with this because let's face it, the Tomcats really is a good opportunity to get down and dirty with some proper nice F14. Um, you know carrier based kind of weathering um, which I'm going to show in the Hobby Boss F14 step by step video build so you know hopefully this is going to wet your lips for that step by step video build um, so coming along the decals forgot to mention the decals which sadly I can't recommend because went off and got some aftermarket decals and went off and used got the Eagle Strike Productions decals I have used these in the past and I knew they were a bit eh, not so good on the um, quality um, and again you know these particular decals were the same as the last ones I got before um, the problem is with these decals were um, they were very very um, kind of brittle um, very thin and basically you come along you put them in some nice warm water and they can just crack you know they just crack for no reason putting in warm, warm water following all the nice procedures and they can just still crack anyway so there was a lot of trying to get some of these decals back together um, as one piece because they just cracked like mad which was really kind of time consuming so I got there in the end um, and what else um, but I mean apart from that I mean apart from that nasty cracking and the other thing was they don't seem to stick down that well either even coming along with like microsol and set to kind of get them to stick down you've got to be careful about them coming back up they even um, if you left them too long without a solution on top started to curl up as well um, so I can't really re recommend these decals um, because I mean although you could use them and I still use them still got a way of using them it just took that extra extra time that extra effort uh, and kind of patience and a bit of skill to kind of get them all back to one piece um, but I still can't recommend them because I mean it's just too much trouble if you're gonna buy aftermarket decals you want decent decal film right um, so sorry Eagle Strike Productions I'd stay clear of them um, so final conclusion of the whole build this is a cracking kit uh, without a doubt right if you take your time with a bit of like dry fitting it is just plain and simply a cracking kit and it is uh, without a doubt a definitely a well recommended kit uh, however and this is going to be like a strange kind of recommendation but I can recommend the kit but I can't recommend the marketing that goes behind it because um, the problem is although it's a great kit Hazagewi doesn't give you weapons and it is just I'm sorry but that is just absolutely annoying and virtually almost kills the kit off because um, for, a, for a start right 
the kit as well costs about £65. I know it varies in price, but I'm just saying about £65. So it's very expensive, right? You've got no weapons, and pretty much everyone I know wants to put weapons on their kit. So, what do you have to do to get weapons? Well, you have to go off and get the Hazagewi um, Weapon Set C, which contains your sparrows, your sidewinders, right? So there's £16. Um, then you want your Phoenix missiles, so you have to go off and get uh, the Hazagewi Aircraft Weapons Set B to get your Phoenix missiles. You only get four, by the way. Um, and that's about £16 as well. So you're spending £65 plus another £32 for a single kit, and you've not even brought any aftermarket parts. So it is a very expensive kit um, which is just so expensive that I think just ruins the kit and especially now that um, Hobby Boss has come along and released their 1 in 48 scale F14 Tomcat nice new tooling and everything um, and do, I mean at 50 pounds for the Hobby Boss you get weapons and I mean it does look like it's a, a definite big contender against the Hazagewi. I am building that one next, um, so you might want to kind of watch out for some news feeds, step by steps on the next Hobby Boss um, F14, I do one in 48 scale, because I'm going to be able to go off and say, okay, Hobby Boss or Hazagewi is the best kit. I can actually go, I've built both of them and I can say which one's the best. Right, so you might want to kind of look out at genesismodels.co.uk to actually see which one is actually the best. But I'm pretty certain that at like £50 for the Hobby Boss, you know, I mean, you can't go wrong at that price getting weapons compared to the whole marketing that goes behind this kit. So um, I hope this has kind of been beneficial. It is a shame at such a nice kit that has been ruined by pricing and not adding weapons. So um, I hope this has been beneficial. Hopefully, you know, you've had a good look and good insight into like the whole kind of Hazagewi F14 and whether you want to buy it or not, including all these aftermarket parts I've just shown you. Um, so until until next time, uh, my name is Bobby Waldron, this is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed.